I'm now back on my departmental computer and what I've simply done is transferred on it the uh, main files so all the 5k files which run the simulation for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna run the simulation from the command line just to show you uh, one way to do it. It is also possible to run these simulations from the mechanical APDL launcher. I've put a little picture uh, on the right to show you what it looks like. Um, but whether you're running it from the command line or for the APDL launcher, the output would be uh, strictly the same. So here I run the LSDyna command from ANSYS 17.0. I activate the double precision, which also you would have to do if you were running from mechanical APDL. Um, and then I write my file name, main.k. Once I've checked that everything is correct, I can just hit enter and the simulation will start running straight away. Here I've slightly sped up the uh, terminal which displayed the results of the, um, of the iterations just for the purposes of this video, but this simulation should not take very long to run, about maybe one or two minutes depending on uh, the computer you're using. Here as you can see after one minute the simulation is already over. It has a normal termination and it ran for exactly one minute and six seconds in terms of clock time. Now you can see the output files of the simulation. Uh, most importantly, you can see a VTK folder, which has the results in the VTK format, and as well two D3plot files. Um, then you will find also other temp files, which are not completely relevant to the results. So mostly you can focus on uh, storing the VTK and the D3plot files. In this case, I'm just going to create a small folder for the g3plot files and quickly remain the uh, vtk uh, folder as well I'm going to save the d3plots as I'm on a departmental cluster computer I'm going to remove these files but of course if you run these simulations from your personal computer if you have a personal LSDyna license, uh, make sure you keep your five input files as they are very useful if you want to rerun the simulations with different parameters. And I'm going to delete these files from the cluster as I have them back up and transfer the results folders to my personal computer. Now that I've transferred these files on my computer once again, you can see the remaining K files, the LSDyna export file as well. the workbench files and as well you can see the results so we're not going to use the VTK format for the moment I'm just going to show you how to have a quick look at the results in LSP post so the first thing we have to do is open LSP post And then what we're going to do is we're going to open that folder. Results D3 plot. And we're just going to open the D3 plot file. Not any of the numbered files, just the D3 plot one, which then includes all the others. So as you can see, our volume was remeshed um, by the solver. And if you look at the transparency view, you can see the leaflet is still inside. And it has two parts that are kind of superposed to each other. And if we only display the leaflet, which you can see here just as a, a wire frame, We can maybe look at the von Mises stress, for example, as a, a criterion. 
So if we look at the von Mises stress on that flap, we can see frame by frame that the flap has been subjected to pressure and that it has rotated. We've only run it for a very short time, but we can see that it has moved. And in wireframe around, you can see the fluid domain And you can see that as the flow has gone in the Z direction, it has deformed the leaflet. And that's the end of this video tutorial. I hope you've understood it and found it quite comprehensive. And of course, I wish you the best of luck in creating your own, uh, hopefully more complex, uh, FSI problems with LSDyna.